All right, welcome to the podcast. So today we got Cody Rich on, and we're still continuing on with that gear series that we've been running. Um, I brought Cody on to talk about food and food that he eats in the backcountry, and I think he's probably a very, very good person to talk to, being that he has a whole box <laughs> and subscription that revolves around it. So, Cody, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, yeah, I've kind of become, uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't grow up thinking I was become like the snack nerd or the backcountry <laughs> snack nerd, but somehow like I've uh, inherited this title and like my entire job is to know like what snacks are coming out. And like, I feel like that, that kid that was at the lunch and always had the good stuff to trade, you know, like now I'm that guy. <laughs> there you go. No, no bologna sandwiches. You're the guy with the Snickers bars at the lunch table. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, which you know, it's uh, it's been uh, quite the journey. I you know, just got into like the backcountry snack game. I guess <laughs> this sounds so funny, but you know, like two years ago when we launched Backcountry Fuel Box, and um, yeah, we can dive into that. But yeah, ever since then, it's been it's a it's a fun journey for sure. It's uh, my eyes have been opened in you know the couple of years of just doing so much research. Yeah. So do let's talk about that then. The backcountry fuel box and when did it start? And and we'll talk about that and then sort of how you got there. But first of all, when yeah. did you kick it off? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, 2015, I launched my hunting podcast. Um, I was actually in the ammunition and gun space. Uh, had a company there and, and kind of wanted to migrate, started a podcast. Uh, that took off. And, you know, I was doing a ton of hunting at the time anyway. And, like, that's that's the reason I started a podcast. Like, okay, I want to be in the, the hunting scene. You know, I was a big archery elk hunter and all that. And so going down that road and, and, you know, like the progression of backcountry hunting, if you will, has always been just keep pushing yourself and doing new things. And, and you know, 2015, that's, you know, I was definitely pushing my abilities or I guess pushing my limits of like going deeper and, and getting better gear. And I know a lot of guys, you know, like start out like, ah, oh, you know, I just want to go on an elk hunt. You know, in 2010, 12, you know, all this, like I just started pushing and going deeper and, and that required better gear you know i could remember going back we were joking about it just the other day in the office of like all the stupid stuff we all did you know like carrying around entire stoves or like five pound tents or like these you know five pound sleeping bags that we used to carry you know and like just had no idea about lightweight gear and hardcore backcountry stuff and so i think we all kind of been there uh and you evolve right like and that's kind of what happens i just evolved and as I was evolving as a backcountry hunter, I was into a lot of, like leveling up the the food side as well, and, you know. And I was seeing really cool stuff that was coming out. Uh, you know, I was got into like the stingers and you know what the backpackers were using for food, and not just like bologna sandwiches that you pack or whatever. And realistically, the idea for backcountry fuel came along because I was like, I I would love it if there was a subscription box that just sent me all this stuff because. You know, I would see, like, you know, at the time it was, like, green bellies, and I would see those, and I'm like, man, I need to order those, and ordering a product, like, it just wouldn't happen until the last minute or whatever, uh, and so, I was like, my girlfriend, my wife now, like, the girlfriend at the time, she had a subscription box for a fitness company, I was like, what, this is a thing, like, someone should do this for backcountry food, and I, the idea kind of sat for quite a while, and I actually tried to get a bunch of my friends to do it, um, I was like, man, I'll be your number one customer, like, I'll, I'll buy this from you. Yeah. And no one did. And so finally, I was like, well, maybe I should just do this myself. And so I, uh, 2018, launched the Backcountry Fuel Box. And it's just been a huge hit. It's taken off ever since. And it's so funny because in the early years, people were like, man, are you going to run out of stuff to put in the box? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, but you know, like, didn't really, hadn't thought it through. We just shipped our 25th box, uh, so a little over two years. And we're still like new products, new companies. There's so many new companies coming out. Uh, it's just an interesting field because there's so many people putting new stuff out there. You know, in the old days, it was like when I started this, I thought I was super cool because I had MREs. You know, we had MREs and I'd buy these MREs and like meal, piece them, piece meal them together with like tuna fish or whatever and like make my own backcountry like I can stash, tell you, right? I have eaten piles and piles of MREs and there's nothing <laughs> cool about them. <laughs> no, exactly, right? And like, and then so I think everyone in the world, and I've talked to so many founders that are launching, you know, whether it's Heather's Choice or Peak Refill or whatever, and everyone's like, we were just tired of eating Cliff Bars in the Mountain House. Like, I just couldn't eat another Cliff Bar or I was going to throw up. You know, I was like, I'd rather start a death than eat another Cliff Bar or Mountain House. 
and there's nothing wrong with those products they're great products but like there was just nothing out there you know for years and so now there's a ton of cool companies uh that are building great products and like that's kind of the journey that i've taken and backcountry fuel started as like a way for me to try new snacks but now it's like a way to show so many people new snacks like quality stuff uh show them that there's better fuel you know i hate to use the cliche term but like better fuel for what you're doing than mres and you know mountain house and cliff bars yeah for sure for sure and your box is loaded up with them i've gotten a few of them in the past and you're always i think that uh my wife got me a three-month subscription for christmas this past year and, nice. and every one that i got was i think they're all gone actually i've eaten all the snacks out of them <laughs> before i even made it to hunting season so um, that's the problem right yeah it is the problem but it's good it's so it's a problem but is it because then you get the opportunity to try that yeah. the latest bar or, or whatever this coffee packet whatever's in there or the meal and then you know if you want to get it for the yeah. upcoming hunting season instead of being taken off guard by oh i'm gonna try out this new meal in september when i'm eight miles deep and it's the worst thing you've ever eaten and you can't even finish it that's something that now I got seven more for the next seven days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you got that, you bought that, you know, bulk pack or whatever. Yeah, uh, and that's what I think is really, really cool about the, that type of subscription box because you can start that now, and that's that's actually one thing I wanted to talk about was when to buy food. Um, start prepping for that stuff now, and I'll let you talk to it. Now's a good time to be trying food yeah. and, and doing things. No, and totally, and like we we hear that a lot. People and our subscription box. Say you subscribe, you can you could pause or skip months whenever you want. Like I'm I'm really big on like I built a subscription box for me, and I didn't want it to be something scammy. So like if you're like, hey, you know, I bought a three month subscription, or I bought you know I signed up for the subscription, and I just want to pause from January through May and start getting it or whatever. Uh, that's totally fine. And the other thing is like I I get it all year, and I think a lot of the you know a lot of our subscribers are like yeah I get it all year, and then. You know, if I find something I like, I stock up on it uh, because, like, we've all experienced this. And this is going on really big right now. It's actually tough to get a lot of products. It's tough for us to get products even. And, you know, you get to, to August or whatever, and, you know, we made this before the podcast. Like, Pink Refuel is really popular right now. It's a great meal. Um, I use a lot of them. But they'll be sold out. Like, they're, you know, mm-hmm. definitely sold out by the time, you know, season comes around. You're like, oh, crap, now what I get, you know. Um, and so it's good. it's good to prepare and things like that. It's, it's also, also good to have variety. One of the things that I've learned through this journey of being in the backcountry fuel is like I, I actually do really enjoy variety. I went on a float trip in Alaska in 2012 and we floated 100 miles of this river. And I think we were in there for like 14 days. And, you know, my hunt buddy and I, we went to Costco and bought the cheapest mountain house case you can get, which only has four meals. And you wouldn't think that like four meals, this is at least some diversity. It's not the same meal every day. Oh, my God, by the end of that, like, I could not eat another Mountain House chicken teriyaki. Like, I was like, dude, I can't do it anymore. Like, it was just, like, the same thing over and over. And I think, like, I don't know, for me, that's been, it's really big. Like, it's definitely, it's a morale thing. It sounds cheesy, but you'd be surprised how much, like, having awesome food in the backcountry boosts morale. Like, you're sitting down in the middle of the day, and you're you're smoke-checked, and you're like, I just, I can't anymore. And you're like, oh, yeah, I want to try this this honey stinger. Like, oh, I'm going to put, you know, like, some a gel pack on this honey stinger. That's... And it just, man, it boosts you up. Not only does it boost your calories and your, your energy, like natural energies and those natural sugars, but like just the morale boost of good food or looking forward to your food can be a huge difference. I, I know for me personally, and I know a lot of guys that you almost get so tired of eating the same thing that you just don't want to eat. You know, you get back to camp and you're like, I just don't feel like eating another mountain house. And so you don't eat. And then what happens is like you start to be calorie deficient. And when you start to be calorie deficient, you, you just go downhill and you start to like lose your morale. Um, you just don't want to do anything and you can't push yourself. And so I think, man, I think it's been huge. Huge help for me to push myself farther and farther. And going back to like, you know, the timing of things, like I think it's important to kind of build your list out. So many of us, and I was this way, you know, even uh, when I thought it was high speed and, and ordering stuff on Amazon, you know, I would basically order bulk amounts of the same thing for the entire month of September and that's where I started getting the burnout thing. So now it's like, I really try to be, and I encourage people to try to like have some diversity. If you're going on a seven day trip, don't order, don't eat the same thing for seven days. Like you'd be amazed like how much you just get tired of eating the same thing every day. 
Um, and, you know, like, another cool pro tip is, like, throw in some stuff like candy. Like, you'd be amazed like, a Snickers bar, uh, you know, or a cookie. Like, I didn't grab it. Like, Monk Pack cookies. I love oh, those yeah. things. They're good protein cookies. Or, yeah, like, Lenny and Larry's is a pretty good cookie, too. Uh, we just had Sin Fit cookies, which is another protein cookie. There's just something about being on the side of the hill, being completely out of energy, and being like, dude, I got a cookie in my bag today. You know, like, it's a simple thing when you're in the backcountry. They're like, yeah, I got this candy bar. Yeah, yeah. I always, so I keep either a Kit Kat or a whatchamacallit or a Snickers or something in every every daily food bag that I have. And <laughs> come around totally. day four or five, you start catching yourself, like, wandering through the woods thinking about a Snickers bar. And it's, totally. Yeah, totally. that's cool. And I don't know if you want to dive into like how like how many calories to pack, like how to set up those. So like for me personally, and I know a lot of guys are this way too. Uh, we take like a gallon Ziploc bag, and I will ration out each day. One pro tip I'll give guys is to do your food by number of nights that you're in the backcountry, not number of days. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are like, well, I'm going over a seven day hunt. Well, usually speaking, you're hiking in that day you're staying at night and then you're hiking out somewhere in the middle of the day so when i set up mine i do number of nights so i will do the dinner breakfast whatever and then i'll have that way like say i leave the truck at you know maybe a little bit before daylight or whatever but i'm usually eating something at the truck that for breakfast that day and then the same when i get out you know sometimes i do an all night or whatever uh but for the most part i'm coming back to the truck you know, midday or whatever it is. So if, if you're gonna, if you know you're going in midday and out midday, you can always just pack enough food for for per night. Um, if you go per day, it's fine. So long story short, is I usually pack. You know, for me, I figured out that I can run pretty well off 3,000 calories a day. And then, so let's just say I have a seven day trip. I'm gonna do 3,000 calories per day. Uh, and maybe a couple of those, I'm gonna throw in an extra 500 calories or an extra little bit. Um, one of the things that I use a lot for that simple calories is like those, uh, ready mix potato packets, which I had some here. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're like 99 cents and I'll throw in, I don't eat them every day. You get tired of them and some meals are, they're good. just like extra calories or whatever. But I'll know that like if I run 3000 calories per day, I'm going to be a little bit deficient every three or four days. So, I'll, you know, throw in an extra uh, you know, gel pack or a couple extra cookies or whatever, or those potato packs, just some extra calories. Um, you know, we talk about weight. Uh, that's a huge thing with the backcountry. And so what I'm shooting for, a pound and a half is pretty good. Two pa- Anything over two pounds is going to be a little bit heavy for me. Um, but probably my heavier days, my more caloric dense days are going to be two pounds. And my lower is going to be 1.5. You know, if I can get 1.2, I'm probably going to run a little bit light. I'd try to shoot that 1.5 to 2 pounds. Um, now, that's going to vary. So a lot, some guys, man, they need 4,000 calories. Some guys can get away with 2,000 calories. I could probably get away with 2,000 calories for a few days. But, man, honestly, I'm going to be cranky. <laughs> like, if I'm going to start to, to, to wear down. If I was doing a three-day hunt, I could probably get away with 2,000 calories per day. And just be like, I'm going to be hungry, but... You know, when I get out, it'll be fine. I'll go super light. If I was – some of my scout trips, for example, uh, be like a two- to three-day, and I'm going to do like 20 miles. Like I'm just covering ground. So then I'm like a pound a day. I'm good, 2,000 calories. Uh, we're, I'll be shooting for – when we look at like products, you can you really start to count calories and things like this. I'm not huge on this personally, but I know a lot of guys are. I think if you're shooting for that 125 calories per ounce – that's about where, you know, the, the pros are, so if you will. Um, so if you look at, like, I'm going to take this. I got a little gel pack right here. Uh, these are 100 calories and 1.1 ounces, so a little bit on the heavier side. You'd be surprised. Um, this Stinger, this is a really popular, this is a great option. These are 140 calories. One ounce. So these are kind of on the, the other end. Of that. These are pretty good. Yeah. Weight to calorie ratio is really good. A lot of guys will pack these, like just snack on these all day. Um, another great option, these Heather Choice Packaroons. Oh, yeah, those uh, are killer. You know, 160 calories, and these are two ounces. So, you know, like hard, fast ruling. A lot of guys will say 125. I don't really follow it to a T. Um, I'd rather be eating things I like. Like, if you took Justin's peanut butter, that's 220 calories per ounce or whatever, mm-hmm. or 
maybe a town and a half. Uh, those are going to be really, really good on that calories to weight ratio. But obviously, eating straight peanut butter for seven days straight is not going to be like the greatest thing. You know, going to feel like right. you know, you're going to have a complete I, energy. One thing that I've found also is some of those things. You just mentioned peanut butter. If you're on sort of a water restricted type of hunt, peanut butter might not be the best option to put in your pack because I know me yeah. and I do the same thing with those gel packs you had there. And I take one of those gel packs and I'll pound almost a liter of water to get it to, to dilute out yeah. of my mouth. So if you're limited yeah. on water, you, you kind of want to be cautious on the things that you put in your pack too. And this, this is why it's kind of good, good to like, for, I say practice, but like mm-hmm. eat some of that stuff and figure it out. Like, man, some of these peanut butters, they're dense. Some of them are really oily. Some of them are like, you know, there's all different very tights. Um, we just got one the other day. I don't remember the name of it, but it's got, I, I want to try it out this year because it's got uh, an entire cup of coffee coffee in the peanut butter pack. Oh, I'm like, wow. oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of the energy thing. I do like the gels. I'm more of like the blocks. We did a YouTube video like taste testing all of the blocks out there. And uh, I prefer blocks over gels, but some guys like gels over blocks. Um, you know, it all depends. And so those are the type of things that are like quick energy. They're good calories, but they're not lasting calories. They're more right. – you know, you're, you're hiking out or you're trying to get back to camp and you're just like, man, I am smoked. I just did 10 miles a day. Uh, man, pop a couple gel blocks or a uh, gel packet. Like, that really does work for an energy boost. Like, those are quick energy that will keep you going. Right. Yeah. Cool. And then also what you're hunting. That's another thing, too. If you're bear hunting and you're sitting up glass yeah. all day, you don't, you don't necessarily need 3,000 calories. So that's... Um, a lot of that that type of intake stuff we covered. That I've had Kyle Camp. I think you're familiar with Kyle. He's yeah. been on a couple of Kyle times. Kyle does a lot of work for us. Yeah. yeah, he's been on a couple of times talking about the nutrition side of how to fuel your body. And he's amazing. If so, if there's anybody listening that have questions on it, reach out to Kyle. That guy, he's got it figured out for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kyle writes a lot for us. He, he's basically our uh, lead nutritionist, if you will. Uh, so if there's any questions I have about that kind of stuff, Kyle is the man. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. He's done a lot for us. So that's where I, I get a lot of my information. It's like, hey, Kyle, what's this? Or like, hey, Kyle. And Kyle and I actually had this conversation about, like, Pop-Tarts and things like that. You know, like, things that you would think of as unhealthy um, can be great resources. So, like, there's, you know – these are all packaged things and they're easy. And, and for me, like they're convenient. Like if you're going on a lot of odds, you know, pop tarts can do something similar. They're, they're basically just sugar, uh, and they work in a very similar way. They don't always hold up as well. You know, sometimes you're just eating crumbled, uh, pop tarts that you drink out of the pop tart package, but you know, things like that can work as well. Um, but yeah, we talk about, you know, basically when you think about your your backcountry hunting as fuel and you, you start to think, okay, what do I need? And yeah, you need those quick sugars. You also need the things that are going to keep you full. Believe it or not, like all of us need something. Well, not all of us. Most of us need something to keep us entertained. Like you'd be surprised how many calories you eat when you're on a hunt that you don't think you're moving much because you, we eat out of boredom. It's human nature. Right. And so like how, how many of us have had like this Ziploc bag full of stuff and like we sit the glass all morning and by one o'clock we're like out of food. We're like, oh no. <laughs> Which is another tip for like uh, you, for why you should put all your food in one gallon bags and day ration them because it's easy to overeat if you just put all your, bag, all your food in one bag. Um, I really like breaking it down per day so I, I know I'm not overeating or somewhere – you know, like, I feel like I'm always trying to, like, leave one thing in my bag uh, that day. Like, that's kind of my goal is, like, I'll leave one piece and then I'll put it in the next day's bag. And then that way, you know, like, it builds up over time and I, I have a little extra. Uh, you know, those guys are like, hey, do you take extra food? Like, what if, what if you get lost or what if this or that? I don't, honestly. Like, I figure I probably got a day or two of starving on me uh, that will be fine. Yeah. But I don't, I don't take any extra. The weight's just not worth it for me. I always usually will throw like a green belly or something, just some extra pro bar. One extra. Just, yeah, yeah, I don't need a whole day's worth of food, but just some, just in case, I yeah. guess. You know, and if you really need it, you've got 600 calories or whatever it is that can get you out. Totally. And that's a good thing for like peanut butter packets. Like if you have, you know, maybe put three extra Justin's peanut butters in your uh, kill kit. I mean, that's like no ounces or even just. You know, coconut oil, which is extra oil, is not going to do a lot for you, but it's extra calories. And I think if you are, you know, the peanut butters are good. They're not going to keep you full, and it's not going to be comfortable. But 
for the most part, you could survive. <laughs> you know, yeah, like it's, it's going to be extra calories, extra fuel, and for pretty little weight. I always have like a couple gel packs. Um, I think like a, it's not my kill kit, but like my day kit or whatever. It's not where my food goes, but it's kind of like the extra. I always have maybe a bar or a stinger and a couple gel packs in there. That way, if I do forget my food or for whatever reason something happened, I always have something, you know, just uh, as a backup. And that's kind of how I do it. Yeah, cool. Um, what does a typical day, like if you're going to pack one bag for today, what would you put in there? Your favorite stuff, I guess, is what I'm asking. Um, that's a really good question. And it changes so much. It's like the snack guy. Like I'm always testing. I'm always like getting new stuff. So there's like what's in front of me. Um, and we could talk, um, if you want about like, uh, non, I guess what do you call it? Stoveless, uh, packless and stove packless. Um, but peaks up there i really like peak refuels i've been uh, big on packet gourmet i really like their meals lately uh i do like heather's choice packer runs uh, off grid makes some really good stuff i like i like to mix it up i really like off grid's trail mix is insanely good we got this new company we started working with and I, i'm definitely going to put them in there just because um it's called hell i'm ugly or ugly company i think and it's recycled upcycled apricots was dried fruit in smaller packages um just to mix it up you know i think for me i get a little bit burnt out on the mre or on the uh on the bars and whatnot uh so i will mix it up stingers are definitely a go-to for me uh this is actually one of my these two a couple of my favorite bars have been lately these mre uh redcon makes yeah. these oh redcon and yeah. those are yeah redcon makes i mean they make a lot of supplement stuff and they came out with like an mre bar uh, I really like those. Green bellies have always been kind of in my pack. Those are like since the beginning. Uh, Chris is actually a friend of mine, and I love green belly meals. So that's probably my go-to for that. Uh, yeah, my, so my go-to day, breakfast, usually a bar. Um, I've been eating a lot of these like caffeine-induced bars for breakfast uh, just so I don't have to make coffee uh, and go that route. Uh, for lunch, is usually a green belly. For dinner, I usually, unless I'm going soulless and going fast, um, I'll probably do a meal. I really, I mean, I do enjoy just cooking up a meal and having a hot meal. Uh, so that's kind of my day was mixed in with snacks, whether it's, you know, various stingers or uh, bars, chews, all that stuff. I usually have some of the chews. I almost always have either Cliff Blocks. Uh, I really like Bonk. Bonk Breaker makes a really good chew. Uh, goo, the Goo Company, GU, actually makes a really, really good one. We I had never had them until we did this like big test that we did on YouTube, and that one really surprised me. I did like that one. Um, What's the name of that of, test? So I can I mean, excuse split. me, so I can link it in. Do you know? Yeah, totally. What What's the name of it? And if I'm, oh, uh, was it? Yeah, what, your YouTube, you your YouTube video. What's the name of that? So I can link it. Well, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'll find it and link it in. It'll it's be on the YouTube channel. It's uh, the shoes, ultimate shoes test or something like that. Okay. Um, and we just split tested with uh, all of the shoes. You know, whether I think we had like seven or eight. Um, so we'll put a link. Yeah, you can put a link in there if you want. Okay. Uh, I'm curious. I didn't hear you say anything about spam. What's going on there? Why don't we have spam in the box? I. I so this came up. I'm actually a fan of spam. I, I love eat spam. Stuff. Like no I love problem. that stuff. Uh, and like I, I think I put like a, like a teaser questionnaire out on Instagram, and people were, there was like some very strong opinions on both sides of the house. Oh yeah. One. So I am now putting them in spam singlets. I am, if you're listening to this, like call me. Let's work a deal because uh, I like they make those like spam little single pack. Things. I have it in every day pack that I make. I put a really? of, oh yeah, I, I can't get enough of this stuff. <laughs> and I do the same. So I've asked questions before on, on Instagram and I get either, I love the stuff, can't get enough of it. Or you get the people that are like, I'm unfollowing your channel because I hate spam so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's like a wild game. Like if you, if you don't like spam, you just haven't had it cooked right. <laughs> yeah. I don't even need to cook it. I just I really? go for it. I ate it all the time as a kid, and then I lived in Hawaii for a bunch of years. And in Hawaii, you you get it at McDonald's. It's on the value it's menu. It's a food group. Yeah, it's a food group in Hawaii. Like, why is that? 
Uh, well, so the backstory on it was was way back way back in the wartime. They couldn't get food, you know, so the the government just started shipping canned foods over, and spam was one of them, and it just became a staple of their culinary. Like it, it's huge yeah. over there. So you go, it, literally, it's in McDonald's, Burger King. It's it's shoot, it's probably in Taco Bell over there, like a spam taco or something. <laughs> I don't even know. You can get it everywhere, but so I ate oh, a lot of it. Really I was in Hawaii too. Like, anyway, yeah. Yeah, that that I I would be surprised if I ever saw that show up in a backcountry fuel box. But uh, I would not. Be. I mean, you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, good. I look forward to it then. Uh, um, yeah. Well, Cody, I think that's it, man. Unless you got anything you wanna you wanna wrap it up with um, any any additional stuff you want to talk about, the forum's all yours for sure. The only thing I would like is advice to people. Um, I know a lot of new guys getting into this uh, have a lot of questions about stoves, um, cooking. Uh, one of my guys were laughing because he started out he, like carried a full Coleman stove one time for an entire season. Uh, and so like for me, I I like the Jeb oil. I run a lot of Jeb oils, uh, or I pretty much run the Jeb oil. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. I think a lot of the stoves. They're pretty much universal. Like, I think you could interchange anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, per- personally, for me, I use the Jeb oil, and I just that's because I've used it for years. Uh, MSR reactor is a really popular one. Uh, you know, whether you go with a pot or say a Jeb oil, I don't know that it matters. Uh, it kind of just depends on your preference. And I know a lot of guys are like, well, I don't have a preference because I've never done this before. Um, mm-hmm. So I, you know, like whatever you can get your hands on. I think you know Jeb oil is pretty cheap. Like MSR reactors are a little bit more money, uh, and you're buying a pot. I I appreciate the jet oil because like it all stacks together. I think it's a good starting point for a lot of guys. Uh, for me, whether I'm even say I'm hunting and I kill a grouse, like it's nothing to boil and put some grouse meat in there. I like that I can make coffee in there. Uh, sometimes your grouse tastes like coffee, and sometimes your coffee tastes like grouse. But yeah. such is life in the back country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wouldn't overthink it. I think people get too wrapped around the axle about their stoves. Uh, Stoveless is becoming pretty popular. I think it's a good option for me. If it was a fair weather hunt, I would be interested in it. And anything under, I would say, five days, I can go stoveless. Other than that, I'm probably just going to pack a stove. You know, like, to me, it's not a big deal. If it's going to be cold, I like a stove. I like a hot meal. Uh, But a lot of guys will go with, like, a green belly for dinner, and that works for them. Some guys, you know, some guys are different. Some guys like a big meal at the end of the day. Some guys do not. Um, and that has uh, a big difference, I think, is if you want to go stove or, you know, not – or use a stove. Uh, so it's up to you. Um, and I think it's it's really important to understand how many calories you're burning and what kind of things. One thing people can do is, you know, it's simple to go on a big hike and just kind of keep track of what how many calories you're eating, if you're hungry, you know, what kind of things work for you and what kinds don't, you know, and – you know, if you get the back of your box and you get to try new stuff, great. Um, if you don't, cool. Um, if you guys just want ideas on stuff, go check out our YouTube channel. Like, you don't have to subscribe. Uh, there's plenty of, I mean, we pretty much, I think we've done, worked with over 120 companies now. Uh, over 100 companies for sure. Uh, so there's plenty of options there you can check out. Uh, but it's easy to just go on a day hike and, and put some miles on and, and figure out what works for you close to home before you go on that big hunt and figure out what doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a ton of information there on your on your uh, YouTube channel. I've got it up over here. And that's what I'm looking at. A um, lot of good information. I agree with you. I love the jet boil. I've also got an MSR pocket rocket and a, that's a good titanium stuff, like ultra light type of thing. But I'll be honest, I find myself going back to the jet boil every every time. It's just, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just it's perfect, right? It's packaged up. Everything's perfect, and it just fits right yeah. there. So. I end up going back to that that pretty much every time. That's, I mean, that's the way I've been too. I've had the opportunity to test pretty much most of them, and I end up throwing the jet oil in because I, or maybe it's just that's what I'm used to. Yeah, you know, like I've just had that forever. Absolutely, and you know I'm going to get a bunch of messages that say, "But jet oil doesn't support the hunting industry." <sighs> I, know. I don't care. I like I know. it. Man. I like it. They're made for. It a reason. is what it is. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, you, that's a rabbit hole. I get this argument on my podcast daily. Like, it's a rabbit hole I don't know that you can go down. You know, does Nike, does Under, like, what, like, what exactly. clothes are you wearing right. right now? That, you know, like, what house products? Like, what does your shampoo company support the hunting industry? Uh, you know, like, I I have supported Jeb Oil in the extent that I have bought 
two. No, I stole one from a buddy. So technically, I've only bought one Jet Boil in 12 years. It's not like I'm supporting them a whole lot. So exactly. Uh, yeah, if if it's big, maybe I'm wrong on this, but you know, MSR, go with that. That's you know, exactly. I There's totally options out that. there. Yeah. I like the Jet Boil. Yeah. I like it, and I use it in the back country of all places. Yeah. Believe it or not, yeah. where it's yeah. made. So. That's it, man. That's all I got. I, I really appreciate yeah. your time and supporting this gear series that we're running. And we're, you know, we're just trying to get people and we're trying to help people understand some of the options that they have when it comes to, to getting out there and cool. making it easy on people. Don't wait until August. I think let's let's circle back really quick to what we <laughs> talked about in the first of the show. And don't wait until August to buy your food because you're going to end up buying 12 Mountain House biscuits and gravy. And then you're <laughs> you're not gonna enjoy it. So yeah, yeah, I'm not good at self promotion because sign up the box if you want to check out some cool new products. Um, our you know my goal with Backcountry Fuel Box is to show people cool stuff, cool new products, uh, and give them an idea, give them some ideas on on what to take, how to take it, all that. So uh, you know even if you don't sign up the box, check out our website. There's a ton of information there. It's a ton of information on our YouTube channel. Our uh, our Instagram is loaded with pretty much every product we've ever put in the box. So mm-hmm. if you just want ideas, go check that out. So. Um, yeah, thank you so much for letting me jump on. Yeah, you bet. I'll link in the the website, and your I'll link all that in Instagram. And cool. uh, I encourage it and recommend it. I used the the backcountry fuel box for a few months, um, and I was I was actually very impressed with the products that came in it. I don't remember what was in it because, like I said, it's all so gone. You ate it too fast. What's that? What's that? So you, ate it, you ate it too fast. I certainly did. I ate everything that was in there. And we got it. My wife and I went on a nice long hiking trip out in West Texas at a big national park before COVID hit and nobody can do anything. But um, yeah. we pretty much loaded up everything from, from the backcountry fuel box into the backpack and we went with it. So, Well, if your uh, subscribers want, we can give them a 10% off discount code. What's What code do you usually give on your podcast? Um... Just rookies. We could create that. Yeah, R O O K I E S. That'll work. Cool. Yeah, let's all do that. Ca- let's do all caps on that. Off. Let me write it down, and we'll link that in there too, and then we'll we'll put that up on the website and all that stuff. I, I appreciate that. That's good. And that way, maybe we'll get some people to try out some good, good quality food. Yeah. Well, I appreciate. It. Yeah. Thanks, absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Thank you.